Okay, what up guys? We found ourselves back again at Kickstarter and we're going to do Kira's Kickstarter adventures here. We're just basically going to pick games out and uh, see what's going on with them. So the first one has got to be Breakwaters. Somebody already linked this on Discord today and said check it out. So let's do that island hopping survival adventure. Fight massive titans and voyage to unique islands across a world scale water sim. A, a, world, sca a world scale water sim, single player and co-op. Okay, I'm sold. I'm down for... We, we've had Valheim. Vikings, cool. I want Pirateheim now. That's where I'm at with it. What the fuck? Oh, this does actually look pretty cool. Please don't hurt me. I've been hurt so many times before. And the water effects look nice. Should probably turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear this hype music. Started on the beach, and now we're here. The true survival game experience. Whoa! Okay. Mate, what are these water mechanics? This actually, if, okay, if I go through and somebody's like, oh, this is already an alpha playable experience and this stuff's already in the game, I'm going to be, I'm going to be quite happy about this game coming out because it looks really cool. Can you go under the water or no? No way is he going to try and kill a big thing. He fucking is. Man, I mean, that looks cool. That looks real cool. Um, stretch goals, character customization, treasure maps and boat paint, improved weapon customization, expanded homesteading and creative mode. So key features. Uh, online and co online co-op and single player, massive ocean sim that creates a unique interactive open world experience. Defeat titans as large as an island and fight golems as big as a house. Gather crystals and refine them into items which displace and deform the ocean, revealing rich treasure resources below. I don't know, how realistic does this one look? Who knows? But either way, uh, it's fully funded, so we don't have to give it any money. They can deliver the game based on what they've already got, so no risk to us to keep our eye on it, because that looks fucking cool, we'll say. Um, so... Tyrant's Blessing has 4k. Let's take a quick gander at that. Uh, this has got 59k, so we might as well look. I'll probably not be super interested. We'll do them one at a time. So Tyrant's Blessing. I always like games like this, but at the same time, since we already have quite a lot of them, I don't know if I'd ever fund one on Kickstarter. I mean, the, game's, the game looks kind of cool, but yeah, would I, would I ever fund one of these? Probably not. It's a necromancer, man. This actually looks like it has kind of cool combat, though. Not gonna lie, looks kind of cool. Not gonna go through all the details on that, but yeah, looks looks cool. I wouldn't mind playing it, but if it happens, it happens. What's this? Stop motion platformer adventure. Oh, okay. I forgot what stop motion was for a second there. 
What an interestingly weird looking game. Co-op platformer adventure game. What an odd looking game. That's extremely unique. Two kids on a quest to say I love you. Well, isn't that nice? The power of love. Uh, this is, at least if nothing else, with Kickstarter games and indie games in general, we get stuff like this, which, if nothing else, this is real fucking original. This is real uh, interesting looking. Like, it actually looks fantastic, to be honest. What a, what a cool looking game. That is real interesting. I'm not going to go through the details, but that is, that is super interesting. The Astral Ascent. Let's take a look at this one. This one has raised £44,000 out of 25, so fully backed. Apparently coming to Switch, Steam and PlayStation. Fuck you, Xbox, apparently. Oh no, it's a fucking Animu game. There better be some big old titties in this, boys. It actually looks kind of cool. I, I really like this graphic style though, so I'm probably biased in that. Wait, is this... Is this single player? Did I miss that already? Because I thought I saw there's two of them there. Is this... Let me just check. Roguelite to beat the four worlds. If you can beat Zodex in 12 mighty bosses. Let's see if it's co-op. Don't go alone. Two, uh, two player co-op mode. Yeah, already interested in this then. I'd definitely play this. I might actually back this, to be honest. I fucking love co-op games. Oh, there's the waifus. A roguelike co-op 2D side-scroller. Sounds like a fun game to me. Are these the cutscenes in game, or are they actually making an anime or something? Yeah, I'm, I might actually back this. Very rare that I do back games, but yeah, I'll do some. Uh, I'll do a little bit of research on this and see how realistic it looks to be being made. But yeah, this looks right up my alley. Local co-op, so like two among the four playable heroes, and experience synergies between your builds, spells, and gambits. Difficulties increase, but a player can help their partner back to life if needed. Camera will allow both of you to fight from each other by zooming out on the fight. Far, fight far away from each other. Yeah, I, I'm down for that one. That looks fucking cool. Astral Ascent. Um, what next? Cute Bite. This is fully funded. 382% funded. How much did I ask for? Uh, what else? This is Necromancer's Gift Monster Taming Roguelite. I love a good roguelite. Might as well. And Immortal Gates of Pyra. 111 grand raised. I think we'll stop at these three. Yee, it's waifu game time. Sleeping coffin. Dead of night, be a psychic. Wait, what? Hotel receptionist, IT help desk, fact checker, content creator. Wages, unknown per day. Facts. You never know how much you're gonna make in a day of content creation. Coat check. Okay, so you you just basically like 
setting things to do for days. So it's like a sim game, like a management game. Go hunting at the kebab shop. Yeah, we're going to the kebab shop. Bit of hunting. We found a delinquent. You charm him with with your allure for 13 mind damage. Just shaking that little chibi ass. Oh no, we were rebuffed. Oh, we've simped him. Is it him or is it her? That's pigtails. I think it's a her. Here we go. Mysterious is promises. Mysterious promises. Okay. I thought there was going to be more waifu scenes there. A little bit disappointed, to be honest. You should have really taken this opportunity to show off the waifus a little bit more. Know your audience, guys. Know your audience. So here we go. Necromancer's gift. Monster taming roguelite. Turn-based monster tamer for grown-ups. Why is it for grown-ups? Includes opt-in multiplayer features and great pixel art. Well, let's not take your word for it. Let's take a look. Oh, so it's like Pokemon. I mean, I don't hate the idea of this, but at the same time, this makes the original Pokemon on the original Game Boy look smooth in terms of like the combat. There's like no animations or anything going on, almost. And the interface and everything and the low frame rate, it just makes it look, or the low like tick rate of things moving, looks a little bit odd. And from what they've shown before, it doesn't look like an op like an open world, like moving around game. It looks like going through like menus, which. And yeah, I tried demo or something of this, but maybe it's just not for me. Not for me. OK, this got 80 grand out of 22 that they wanted. A free to play strategy game for PC featuring powerful armies, smooth controls and godlike spellcasting commanders known as immortals. Projects we love. All right, take your word for it, Kickstarter. You, Kickstarter, you do love a lot of shit, though, to be fair. Is this a, a MOBA or an RTS? Oh, that frame rate. Oh, that's some solid frame rate. I think the music's cool, I'll give them that. Strategy evolve. Oh god, here comes the buzzwords. Yeah. Um, okay. 2v1v1, 2v2, 3v3. Well, hopefully they they get the frame rate sorted out because that frame rate looks really bad. So the the problem of RTS has been for such a long time now. Um, how do you make it easy to get into without ruining the professional experience? Can you simplify it at the low level and keep it complex at the high level? One of the other problems with RTS that people very rarely talk about is that people don't... It's the same with fighting games and stuff like that. People don't typically like 1v1 games. And RTSs are usually always focused around the one versus one meta. Uh, 
it. So if that's your main player base, it's always going to be niche because people don't like to lose one-on-one -on, -one on things because there's no one to blame. Like, this has always been a case in, St in StarCraft, where even when StarCraft was big, people would have, like, ladder anxiety. They would literally sit there for hours looking at the Q button or being like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, I'll take a shower and then I'll Q. And then they just never wind up playing the game because they know once they're in there and the pressure's on, like, it's me versus this other person. It's like, it takes a certain mindset to do it. That's why team games took over from RTS just completely. Uh, at least that's one big thing that I think is, is generally pretty widely accepted as being taken as true. You get the skills true. floor, you get the skill ceiling, and if you make the game harder, it goes up. If you make the game easier, it goes down. And so whenever people saw, for example, in StarCraft 2, whenever people saw something that made the game easier for new players, the assumption was that it changed the experience of the high-level players by the same amount. And so we went through and meticulously kind of picked out all the things that would change the skill ceiling by a very small amount, or by zero, and then drop the skill floor dramatically. Which sounds insane, and it is a little bit, and we did it. There's a particular feature you where for it. you get to exist in the same space with other players and have multiple games with them. And I think that's really going to change a lot of how people experience something like RTS. It can be, you know, it can be a retreat from their their struggles or, or wherever it is, you know, and not in a sort of this like... Why are they just zooming in on the back of his head? ...into video games kind of way, but like a place where you really truly connect with people that you care about and you enjoy experiences uh, you know we've got some really passionate community members jonathan like, big john uh, i'm never gonna forget uh yj chess uh he what a nickname a whole short story and it was just like crazy like whoa somebody's thinking about this stuff and like really is a fan of it when i got to read his short story i was like wow this is about our world immortal setting creation is expansive and dramatic encompassing entire star systems, galaxies, and effectively an entire universe worth of potential. We draw heavily from science fiction, high fantasy, and cosmic horror to create a unique blend of drama and tension that we want to give to our players in our community. We've had years of creative input, systemic input from all of our developers, and that's something that we really prioritize. Every situation that we face, everybody brings passion. They bring their, their thoughts and Papa their ideas. Doom. The situation. What a legendary name. But nobody's married to them. And we hash things out and we come up with the right answer together, not the answer that we brought with us. And so we decided that we were all committed to each other and um, and committed to making things happen and making them work. So, uh, so we burn the boats and there's no going back. Oh, well, I, I like RTS. I've played RTS for most of my life. So if it's good, I'll play it. But it's backed. They got 80 grand. They wanted 22. So hopefully they can deliver the game. And yeah, I'll take their word for it. Whenever somebody tells me we've solved the problem of an entire genre, I'm always like, oh, yeah, of course you have, mate. Yeah, 100%. But best luck to them if they have. So yeah, I think that'll we'll do that. That's 20 minutes, I think, of Kickstarter madness. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully some of these games was interesting to you. We'll do one of these roughly every 10, 14 days-ish if there's anything new and interesting on Kickstarter, which there generally always is. Maybe we'll do another one where we go over like the upcoming Steam early access games, something like that. Do a, another early access showcase. Because for me personally, I don't know about you guys, but I've said this multiple times, I've had more fun from early access games on Steam over the last seven or eight years than I have from AAA games by a country fucking mile. So I'm always interested in keeping an eye on, uh, an eye on upcoming indie titles, and this is one way to keep an eye on them. So Thank you very much for watching. Check the social links in the video description. I stream on Twitch most days of the week. Uh, won't be doing today, won't be doing tomorrow because I'm at the hospital tomorrow. But I also have a Discord full of nice people who play games together, talk about games, and a Patreon if you want to support me further. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.